ketamine, also known as K, Kitty, Special K, and other things, and also sold under the brand name Ketalar, is a medication mainly used for starting and maintaining anesthesia. It induces a trance-like state while providing pain relief, sedation, and memory loss. Its effects typically begin within 5 minutes with its main effects lasting up to 25 minutes. Ketamine has been classified as an NMDA receptor antagonist, but its mechanisms are not well understood as of 2017. The increase in recreational use prompted ketamine's placement in Schedule 3 of the United States Controlled Substances Act in August 1999. When it really comes down to it, ketamine can be a very dangerous drug if used irresponsibly. It is not naturally occurring, it is not plant-based, and it's scary, honestly. I myself, as well as countless others in the world, have experienced what is known as a K-hole. This can be one of the most intense and scary things a drug can do to you if you're not ready for it. We'll talk more about that towards the end of this video, but for now, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it, subscribe for more content, and let's get into the history and truth of ketamine. Just like Sandoz is the company usually linked with psychedelics like LSD, the pharmaceutical giant Park Davis has a much older connection with altered states of mind. The company obtained some peyote cactus as far back as the 1880s, leading to the discovery of mescaline. But the real problem child for Park Davis sprung from their own womb in Michigan by the name of ketamine. Ketamine was first synthesized in 1962 by Calvin L. Stevens a professor of chemistry at Wayne State University. Stevens named it C1581. Its discovery came out of the search for PCP replacements. This occurred just before Timothy Leary left Harvard, John Kennedy was assassinated, and the United States sank further into the war in Vietnam. On August 3rd, 1964, ketamine was given to a human being for the first time by Edward Domino. That night, he described to his wife his utter amazement at seeing a person who was fully awake, but not there. The hope for replacement for phencylidine, aka PCP, had been found. In 1966, ketamine was patented by Park Davis for use as an anesthetic in humans and animals. An all-American, all-artificial drug, one that was not first synthesized in Europe or extracted from plants like mescaline and psilocybin. For some strange reason, Stevens quietly rushed through a patent application in Belgium. And after an epic legal battle, Park Davis gave a large payment to Stevens and ownership of ketamine was returned to the company. It was known ketamine was being used outside of the hospital and laboratory as early as 1967. The drug was being spread by some rogue medicinal chemists from Michigan out to the Florida coast under the names of Mean Green and Rock Mesk. In 1970, the FDA approved ketamine for use in children and the elderly. The early hospital trials recorded experiences both pleasant and unpleasant. Throughout the 1970s, the drug began to be distributed worldwide from Australia to Argentina to Southeast Asia. The drug was even mentioned in an episode of MASH. By the end of the 70s, the FDA was worried about ketamine on the streets. From this time on, ketamine made the move into the mainstream with the growth of techno clubs and raves. The Office of National Drug Control Policy added ketamine to the emerging drugs list in 1995, noting use across the country. In August 1999, ketamine became a Schedule III drug at the federal level across the United States. When it comes to ketamine, there are a lot of pros and cons. It can be used as a surgical tool to sedate patients in a somewhat pleasant way while not using anesthesia that can be more toxic or dangerous to patients. But it can also be as serious and dangerous as to cause death in users irresponsibly consuming the drug. Though it is extremely rare, there are cases where people have died on ketamine. Most reported cases of death from ketamine toxicity is also due to the drug being mixed with other substances like fentanyl, ethanol, or alcohol. For the record, ketamine is not a drug you want to mix with any other chemical. Usually the deaths are caused by behavior and not by the actual toxicity of the drug. 
For instance, in 2011, a young girl was watching TV with a friend. They took some ketamine. Her friend fell asleep. She took a bath and drowned after falling asleep in the bathtub. Or in 2010, a middle-aged male in California suffocated after taking ketamine and laying in an unsupervised downward-facing yoga position. As I said, this drug can be very dangerous and mostly because of its tranquilizing effect, also known as a K-hole. You can literally become tranquilized if you take a certain amount, which can be not only terrifying, but extremely dangerous, especially if you take it with the wrong people. In the next week, I'll make a trip story video about the time I was thrown into a K-hole at a house party, and the cop showed up, and it was fucking scary. Stay tuned for that. In conclusion, ketamine can be a fun, mind-expanding drug, but it's also dangerous if not consumed responsibly. Please do your own research, and always test your drugs before consuming them. Link in the description to get your own testing kits. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you. Let me know in the comments down below if you ever tried ketamine or if you've been affected by ketamine in any way. And I gotta say, YouTube isn't what it once was, and the only way we're able to make this content for you guys is with your help. So please consider checking out the merch at audible484.com. You can also support on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, and it helps a lot. Smoke something, drink something, and I'll see you next time.